Hi friends. Yesterday we learned about how characters in our stories that we read have feelings, just like us. We learned that sometimes those feelings are positive, like happy, excited, amazed, and sometimes those feelings are negative, like nervous, sad, or worried. We learned that it's important to learn about our characters by thinking about how they feel. We learned that after noticing the way that a character acts, speaks, or thinks, we can then make sure we use the right word to describe how that character feels. Yesterday, we got a look at this anchor chart, and it says, inferring. Readers pay attention to the characters in their stories. They notice how they act, how they speak, what they say, and what they think. Then, once we make those noticings, then good readers ask, what does this tell me about how the character feels? And what feeling does this capture? Remember, yesterday we started the story, Malala's Magic Pencil, and we stopped here where she realized that if she had a magic pencil, she would use it to bring peace to the world because remember, we started to learn that not all of the kids were able to go to school because we saw that there were kids digging out from the trash. And her father told her that some kids aren't able to grow up and be what they dreamed of being, especially girls. In Pakistan, they didn't want girls going to school. So we're gonna pick up. It said, first I would eat, erase war, poverty, and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. That's where we left off. Here we go. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day. I wanted to be one of the top students in my class. And here I noticed Malala standing at the front of the class and it looks like everyone else is looking at her really engaged. And I can tell, or I think, I infer that Malala is feeling confident. But soon, powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. And forbidden is a really strong word for not allowed. They walk the streets of our city now they carried weapons. Here, I noticed Malala hunched over and kind of looking off to the side. I noticed that she said or thought that dangerous men said that girls could not go to school. So I'm inferring or thinking that she's feeling scared. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Johnny. How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in their city. I wrote about how much I love school and how proud I was of my uniform. On this page, I notice all the writing that Malala is doing. See how you can see all these people here that all of her writing is reaching and all these papers, like as if they're fluttering in the wind to all these people. So she's doing all this writing from her bedroom. And I can infer that Malala is feeling determined, determined to make a difference, determined to reach all of these people by all of the writing she's doing about what's happening in her country in Pakistan. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and travel, traveled around my country, sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. 
My voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence me, but they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever. Louder because people have joined me and together we make a chorus, standing up for what we believe. We raise our voices for those in need, help people in danger, even if they are, are an ocean away. Think and we think of the world as a family. Notice all of these people who are standing with Malala and wanting to make a change and wanting to make it so that girls can go to school. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my story. Millions now know it and help me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my words and in my work. So here I notice again how Malala is working hard here. She's doing some reading and some writing here. She's looking at the difference that she's made. And so I think that she's feeling proud because she's noticing how her words have made such a difference. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One, te one child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. And here I notice Malala standing up, giving a speech in front of a group of people. And based on her facial expression and the facial expressions of everyone else, I can infer that Malala is feeling dedicated and strong because of the difference that she has made and how she is working so hard to make these dreams come true. The end. So like I said, this is based on a true story. This is, or these are pictures of Malala in real life. And this is a story that actually happened. Um, Malala actually fought for girls to be able to go to school in Pakistan. And it's an incredible story. So now that we have read the whole book and we have talked about how Malala is feeling in the book based on how she acts, speaks, and thinks. Now it's your turn again today to go practice using these tools. So remember, when you're practicing the strategy, you're gonna think in your book about how is my character acting, thinking, or speaking. Then you're gonna use those noticings to come up with an idea of how the character is feeling. Good luck.